back to wrench today, we're gonna get a quarter panel on this car. If you haven't been following the build, this was a 1969 911S, in fact, the 22nd 911S to roll off the line that uh, in 1994, a father and son team converted into a race car. It then sat in the showroom for 25 years. It was never outside until I bought it uh, a month or two ago and I'm converting it back into a street car. So what happened is it had this huge GT2 body kit. Once I took those things off, it was just basically a shell of a car until restoration design came through. They sent me ugh, a lot of things, including new quarter panels for the car. Um, now, admittedly, I was pretty intimidated by this. Um, I've never put a quarter panel on a car before, but just like my gray ghost build in the garage, I just dove right in. Now, if you haven't been following this along yet, consider hitting subscribe. This is a pretty fun project. If you're a vintage Porsche fan, if you're a car restoration fan, this is gonna go on for a while. I have a ton of cool work and fabrication to do on this car, and it's gonna be a pretty awesome engine uh, when I get it. So, let me show you what I did on the driver's side and I roughly fit and kind of tell you how I'm going about installing this quarter panel. First and foremost, the panel that Restoration Design sent me obviously is the entire quarter. It's in its entirety here. I was a little concerned about this section especially. I didn't really want to cut up my existing car with factory metal and I was worried about it. But here's what I decided to do on the passenger side. First, here's the hole. This is what the GT2 body kit had on it. You can see where it was cut here, but really the, the window and the top of the window frame is all intact, as is the existing latch panel. It's all there. So I was like, let me keep as much of the factory stuff as I can, but I'll show you what I did on the driver's side. So I loosely fit this thing last night. And what you can see is I basically cut the top of the window frame off because it was all good. And what I'm gonna do is use the line that it was cut before as my weld line. This is really firm steel, so the, the chances of this warping are much lower. And you see I cut it here. Well, I'm not too worried about it because I'm actually trimming the entire drip rails. Those things are all going away anyway. So if I have a weld line here and then one here for the drip rail, I'm fine with that. Uh, so what I ended up doing basically is, let me get this off, is I did, drill out the spot welds here, and I drilled out the spot welds here, and I just cut the top and the top. This has a lot more trimming to do to be perfect, and certainly before it gets welded in. I'm not doing any welding yet until I get both panels on and I get this cross brace roughly fit, so I have a pretty good idea of you know, where it's gonna be. So anyway, let's jump into the other side and uh, get that sucker mocked up. The first thing I have to do is get rid of this Lexan quarter window. This has got a plastic frame on it here, and it's held on by some eight millimeter uh, nuts on the other side. So they're a little tricky to get into. It's like a two or three millimeter Allen head, and then like a little eight millimeter on the other side. So get that thing off, and then start working on drilling out the spot welds here and the spot welds here. So quarter windows are out. And what I'm gonna do now is grind right here so I can see the spot welds. And I'll pull this off as well, this felt, and uh, do the same thing, grind to see the spot welds in the spot and then start drilling away.
So this is what we're looking for here. Now that I've exposed these, you can see where the spot welds are. And I've ordered a spot weld drill bit, but it's not in yet. So I'm gonna give a go at a regular drill bit and just try to be careful that I don't go through each side. Um, the goal here is to drill out all these spot welds, separate this from this. I'm gonna make a cut right here. That's gonna separate this piece. Then I'll make another cut somewhere around here so that this piece can be taken off as well. Let's get into it. So I'm gonna show this to you guys. You see here how that's starting to separate. If I do this, you can see that this is actually two pieces pinched together with these spot welds. So the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of give this thing a little bit of a wrench and see if I can just begin separating it like that. You see that separating there? Right there, right there. And then once I get it started, I'm going to start kind of prying it. There we go. That one broke. I felt that spot break. Now, I don't want to do too much because I don't want to mess the initial OEM stuff up. But you can hear all that stuff kind of cracking off. That's what we want. Yeah, see there? This is fully... Let's see. It's getting fully separated along the edge now. That's the goal. One thing is a quick tip while I'm doing this. I'm pushing pretty hard, uh, not going super fast with the drill bit. It's one reason I'm using a cordless because it doesn't go quite that fast. But as I'm pushing, I'm feeling just a little bit of give, just a teeny bit of give. And as soon as it gives, I back off because I don't want to go through. I just want to go through one layer, but not both. All right, so that's just a little tip for drilling out spot welds with a regular drill bit. Um, again, I've ordered a spot weld drill bit from Amazon, uh, or a spot weld cutter, and basically it, it cuts a hole around the spot weld, and you just peel it off. This is fine, it requires a little more wrenching. Anyway, that's the tip of the day. All of this is gone. Um, I've got to trim this a teeny little bit and get rid of a little bit of that inner. 
and of course get this bottom part totally dialed in. I've also just discovered that on this car, this is missing this inner rocker. So I'm going to have to get that part and weld it on before I do any of this. Uh, nevertheless, it looks like this could use some cleaning up as well, but uh, overall I think it looks really good. And um, this will be ground down a little bit. So I think what I'll do now is just kind of trim up a couple of spots and then start working on getting the fender fit. I've made some serious progress so far and I want you guys just to, to see what I'm doing and not be too intimidated by it. I've used like three tools. I've used a drill, I've used an angle grinder, and that's about it for this so far. Um, if you went to a shop to have this thing done, it's like $8,000. I'm not even exaggerating. It's a huge amount of money. So if you want to, you know, if you found some cool, you know, 912 Targa in a junkyard or something, don't be afraid to grab it, dig into it a little bit, because it's not that bad. It's just metal. So even if you mess up, someone who's talented with metal can fix it, but I'll bet you can fix it. Anyway, I'm going to clean this up a little bit more and then kind of do a rough cut of the fender and uh, or the quarter panel rather and see how it fits. pretty much ready. Uh, I'm going to size up the quarter panel on the car and kind of mark out with a sharpie where I'm going to trim it. All right, dudes, so I am pretty pleased with the fit. Let me show you kind of what I just did. There was a couple things I did off camera just to kind of trim it a little bit, but um, I think it looks pretty good. Have a look. So starting from the back, I've got this area. Again, all this has to be trimmed a little bit more, but uh, this goes up here. Now the real line for this is somewhere around here. 
so it's going to go down that way. It's going to be a butt weld. I'll show you how I do that when the time comes. Um, and then this pinch weld is now really close. Again, I can't thank Restoration Design enough for just making these amazing panels. Um, this is going to have to be trimmed, but this is actually really close in here to how it's going to be. And then uh, going down, this channel fits well. What I'll do is I'll drill a bunch of holes here, and that will be the spot weld holes for the new spot. And then this will be trimmed properly uh, so that this becomes a butt weld as well. Right now it goes to about here. I did discover during the course of this process that um, uh, I've got some rust repair. I'm actually gonna have to fix the inner rocker on this. And I didn't think there was gonna be any rust repair. So it's all right, no big. So what I'll do now is put a couple of uh, tech screws in just to hold it roughly in place. Then I actually have the rear panel and I wanna see if I can maybe get the rear panel kind of generally fit so that there, the spacing on the um, fenders is correct. All right, I put a couple of screws in just to hold it. Um, obviously, I've got to work on the, the body lines and we're, we're nowhere close to that yet. That all happens once we're ready to weld. But um, really happy with how this thing's fitting. It's actually better than the other one. Uh, it looks great. It's cool to see the car kind of aligned now. And uh, in case you're worried about this, I have a little surprise for y'all. And that is to get some flares on this bad boy when all is said and done. And um, I've got a lot of cool body work I'm going to do to this to uh, round out this hard edge. But um, yeah, this is going to be awesome. It's going to be sick. That is a very successful first day of quarter panel fitment. I think it looks great. There's so much more work to do. Uh, getting precise measurements, chassis measurements from known points is a really big deal. So I'm getting those diagrams sent to me now. Um, making sure I can still weld on what I need to do uh, in the rear deck lid area, that's a big deal. And uh, you know, just getting it super dialed, you know, before you actually take torch and weld this thing to the car. But I hope that this takes some of the intimidation factor out. It's not that big of a deal. It's just a little patient, a lot of drilling holes, making sure metal gets separated and then trimming appropriately. So as always, hit that subscribe button, tell your friends about this build, and uh, I will see you next time.